Welcome in to the SMU TV studios in Dallas, Texas. I'm Grace Lawrence. And I'm Peter Warner. We're here to bring you up to date on everything SMU athletics and more. Let's go. SMU fell to TCU at home in the 101st meeting of the Iron Skillet. They lost 42-34. It was a sellout in Ford Stadium upon Sonny Dykes' return. The attendance was just over 35,500 people. TCU quarterback Max Duggan was undeniably the guy for the Horn Frogs. He completed 22 of 29 passes for just under 280 yards and threw for three touchdowns. TCU scored twice in the first quarter, a very strong start, but SMU found life in the second quarter, scoring two touchdowns, one coming from running back Trey Siggers and the other coming from wide receiver Rasheed Rice. Despite the offense starting to score, the Mustangs found themselves down, going into halftime 28-14 to and could not claw their way back in the second half. SMU is now 2-2 two and two and starts conference play next. But before we get to that, Peter, can you break down that confusing call towards the end of the game? Uh, lots of fans were wondering what that last call was at the end of the game as the Mustangs were f forced TCU to punt with 50 seconds left. Leaping on a punt is defined as a defensive player who is inside the tackle box, tries to block a punt by leaving his feet in an attempt to leap over the frame of an opponent, and I guess that's what the Mustangs did. Brett Lashley looked furious after the play and stormed onto the field, but kept it calm for the post-game conference. He said, I thought officials did fine on both sides, keeping it in check. We may never know what could have been with SMU getting the ball back, but we do know what SMU and Coach Lashley have coming up next. Yes, Peter, SMU starts conference play on the road at UCF on Saturday. I think this is the most interesting storyline of the season. Rhett Lashley takes on his mentor, Gus Malzahn. Malzahn coached Lashley in high school back in Arkansas, where Lashley was a fierce quarterback, thriving in the high-tempo offense Malzahn is known for running. But the story doesn't stop there. Malzahn also gave Lashley his first major coaching gig as a grad assistant at Auburn. Well, that Auburn team had a guy named Cam Newton at quarterback. Yeah, they ended up winning the national championship in 2010. Then Lashley headed to Sanford in 2011, but reunited with Malzahn as his OC at Arkansas State in 2012, followed by their return to Auburn once again later that year. Lashley was his offensive coordinator and quarterback coach during that second stint at Auburn. He even has a reputation of Malzahn Jr. So Peter, what do you think about Saturday and what it holds knowing their history together? I mean, as we saw last Saturday, you know, Rhett played a coach that he had a history with, with Sonny, who was, he was kind of also one of Rhett's mentors, and it didn't turn out so great, which is worrisome from my point of view for the Mustangs. Sonny knew the whole off SMU offense that was going to be coming at them, and they were able to defend it really well and the defensive scheme. And I worry that since Rhett's, like, first major leader was Gus, that Gus could be kind of using that same thing that Sonny did to take advantage of the Mustangs. And that's the one thing that worries me, especially bouncing back, trying to bounce back after a very tough loss over the weekend. Right. The flip side of that is nobody knows Gus probably better than Rhett. You know, former teammates have called them, you know, it's like a married couple when they fight because they know each other so well. They're so comfortable with each other. So it'll be interesting heading into Saturday. That game kicks off at 2.30 p.m. on ESPNU. And up next, we'll recap more fall sports on the hilltop. Catching frisbees and building bonds. That's what the SMU Ultimate Frisbee Club is ultimately about. COVID-19, the whole pandemic and everything really put a damper on some people, but with Ultimate Frisbee, it was kind of a light for people. The co-ed club of over 30 members meets twice a week to practice for tournaments. We went from like losing most of our games to now we're like actually a competitive team. So it's been like a strugglesome journey, but it's been like really rewarding because the team's grown a lot. But to the team, the club is also about building community. It can be a business student, engineering student, music student. It doesn't matter. We're all just on the team together having fun and just meeting each other, hanging out. For updates on the SMU Ultimate Frisbee Club, follow them on Instagram at SMU underscore ultimate.
Welcome back to Press Pass. Now, Peter, it looks like men's soccer blew out their opponent. Can you tell me more about that game? Yeah, so last week on Press Pass, I said that the SMU soccer team really needed to get their offense back on track. And they did more than just that on Friday. The team was rolling, and they scored six goals against FIU. Four of those goals came in the first half, and Jose Ortiz made third place on SportsCenter's top ten on Saturday night. The Allander and Ortiz each tallied their third multi-goal games of the season. Over on the women's soccer team, they beat Temple on the road to improve their record to a 6-1-3 on the season. The lone goal came in the 13th minute from Alina Khan. It was assisted by Sammy Neves, who now leads the team with four assists. It was goalkeeper Samantha Estrada's second straight shutout and fifth of the season. The Mustangs host USF for more AAC action on Thursday at 7 p.m. SMU Volleyball hosted two Florida schools over the weekend to open conference play. First, they took down USF 3-1. The Mustangs won the first two sets and rebounded back to win the match after dropping the third. Meriki van der Marke registered a season-high 14 kills. On Sunday, SMU lost to an undefeated UCF team to close off the weekend. They host Memphis at home in Moody on Wednesday before a three-game road trip. Now, so to come, Peter gets us prepped on the upcoming NHL season, and the Super Bowl halftime performer was announced. Stay tuned. Cubs soccer team officially started two years ago, and I think it's come a long way over the years. Um, it's been gaining an interest each season. We had 65 girls out at tryouts this year, which is absolutely amazing, and I think it shows the interest in the club team here. Turned out to be more than I could imagine, so it's just as intense, but without the major commitment. Everyone kind of brings their own thing, um, so you're not just with a ton of serious athletes, you're with people who are more focused on their academics and stuff like that, and you get to kind of come together and just make new friends that are all ages and not just in your, like, academic classes. There's a few that just played all throughout high school and just didn't really know what to do them mm -hmm. with themselves. Once they made it to college, they needed some sort of soccer outlet. Used to be intramurals, but now we have one step up with play. Hopefully there's a spot for you. For more information, contact Tori Fitzgerald at vfitzgerald at smu.edu. Welcome back. October is just around the corner, which means NHL is back. Let's talk some puck with NHL Power Play. The NHL preseason kicked off this weekend, and there are many storylines to look into when it comes to preseason odds. Colorado leads the way with the most of their championship team coming back, though it is said every season now the new goaltending tandem is going to be finally really important to get Toronto to the second round. The Arizona Coyotes will be playing in Moore Arena, a 5,000-seat college stadium at Arizona State. Lastly, who's going to be the team that wins the draft lottery for Connor Bedard? Arguably the best prospect since Connor McDavid, and we all know how well that turned out. This clip, I think, just speaks for itself. That'll do it for NHL Power Play. Now, Grace, what have we got? Please don't stop the music. Rihanna was announced as the 2023 Super Bowl halftime performer. The nine-time Grammy award-winning artist made the announcement on Sunday via social media with a photo of her arm holding a football with the NFL logo. The 34-year-old singer has released eight studio albums. Her most recent one came out in 2016. Now she constantly teases to her fan base that new music is coming soon. And well, what a way to make a comeback. Now, Peter, I'm one of the biggest Rihanna fans. I've been waiting for new music for we're almost at seven years. She's collabed with Kanye, Jay-Z. The list is long for who her guests might be. Are you excited? And what have been some of your favorite past halftime performances at the Super Bowl? I mean, some of my favorite, the Rolling Stones in 2005. I've just always been, you know, a big Stones fan. Um, and then also I like the Black Eyed Peas and Katy Perry's. Those are just like the three from when I was growing up that I kind of remembered the most. But I think this year's going to be really exciting. There's going to be a lot of fun cin cinematography, I guess, but, if you could say. So. Exactly. I love Katy Perry's, too. I think she's a great performer, and I really liked the one last year in Los Angeles, so we'll see if this one can top all the greats before it. So those were some great shows. Last year's had so much about the culture of the game, like I just said, in the city of Los Angeles. So we are excited for her to take the show in Arizona in February to see what she can do. Well, that's all we have for you, Mustangs. 
Remember, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash SMU television and follow us on Twitter at SMU TV. If you have any story ideas, shoot us an email at smutv at smu.edu. Thanks for watching this edition of Press Pass. Tune in next week for more sports coverage from the Hilltop. Until then, have a great day and pony, pony up. up. SMU and the Division of Journalism would like to thank our sponsors, North Park Center off of North Central Expressway and Kitchen United Mix, located inside Kroger off East Mockingbird Lane. We would like to thank you for your continued support of student media.